Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today we're going to be painting abstract autumn reflection blue and I'm going to be sipping on a little Chardonnay. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so what we're going to use for materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. Of course, you could certainly switch up the size if you're painting along with me, but that's what I'm going to be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. My colors are fire red, chrome yellow, fluorescent orange, Mars black, titanium white, ultramarine blue and raw or burnt umber. I almost said raw umber, but it's really burnt umber, which I will call brown. And of course you could certainly switch up those colors if you'd like. I've got some tools that I'm using today. I have a half inch wide bristle brush, flat bristle brush. Um, and I also have a number one round brush and I'll refer to these as small and large throughout the painting process. And of course you could switch those up if you'd like. I've got a couple of fun tools today that I'm also using. I'm going to be using some saran wrap that you could probably just get from your kitchen. <laughs> and I'm also going to be using a business card, um, just something that's got like firm cardstock. You could use a credit card, you could use a piece of cardboard or, or a business card, um, just something that's nice and firm along the edges. And I if you're painting along with me, you're also going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will provide you with a couple of additional resources. Um, one of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact kit that I'm using with all the little fun goodies that I'm using today. Um, so that's there. There's also a free downloadable image of the final painting. So you could print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions for you down there as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for this step, which is kind of the first step, <laughs> is we're gonna be putting the base coat on the canvas. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are white, blue, brown, and black. And I'm gonna be using a lot of paint and I'm gonna be doing it in a very messy fashion. I'm gonna be doing um, it in the order of white, blue, brown, and black. I won't wash my brush and I'm gonna work from white on the outside, then I'll do a little bit of blue, then a little bit of brown, and finish with black in the middle. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna just pick up a whole bunch of white and just not even really do much with it at this point, just kind of glob it on there. The beauty of abstracts is we get to totally be chaotic and have not the um, cleanest of um, painting strokes. So now, whoops, almost just lost my brush there. So now that I've got it globbed on there, I'm just going to kind of messily paint it in here just so I have good coverage. You don't need any particular brush stroke, just something that's going to give it some good coverage. You want it to be nice and thick. Um, so just make sure that you've got plenty of paint on there. We want it to stay wet for a little while. Um, so now that I've got my white nice good coverage of it. Make sure I've got it really thick in some spots. Now I'm going to start to add some of my blue without washing my brush and I don't want it to be super consistent. Consistent, So I am going to just kind of, you know, put it in some varying spots without making it in a one particular line, so to speak. Now I'm gonna pick up some of my brown without washing my brush and just kind of intermingle it a little bit with the blue and you can put it on whichever side of the blue that you want to, just getting it on there is gonna help to provide this illusion that we're gonna be creating this abstract illusion. And now I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just picking up some black and kind of globbing the black on in the middle 
And then once I've got that in there, I'll just start to kind of fill in the spaces with whatever kind of colors that I want. So maybe if I've got some extra blue, I can put it in some of these little spaces. And I'm not really concerned about painting, painting it. I really just want to get the, um, the colors on there. Um, and I'm not even going to move the paint around much. We're going to use our um, saran wrap for that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to, before I move to the next step, I am going to kind of just pull up a couple of strategic spots and whatever you do on this side kind of emulate on this side so i did a couple there now i'm going to do a couple here and then a couple here and then we are going to be switching to our saran wrap for the next step so once you've got your paint all globbed onto your canvas you can put your big brush away maybe have a little bit of a sip and get ready for the next step All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm going to be applying some saran wrap to my canvas. So how I'm gonna do that is you can just take whatever you've got at home. I wanna make sure that it's gonna fit. So I'm just pulling, ripping off a strip that's gonna fit for me lengthwise because that's the size of saran wrap that I have in my house. And then I'm just going to lay it down on my canvas and I'm gonna need two pieces of saran wrap because mine's not wide enough. And then, so I'm gonna put another, another piece on the other side. So just make sure I have it long enough. I'm going out of camera range. I understand that it's tough to do this in the camera and get it on, on my um, canvas at the same time. So now I'm just kind of laying it down like this, making sure I've got full coverage. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a whole bunch of fun. So I'm just gonna kind of pat down my saran wrap. And once it's all nice and patted down, I'm gonna start to just um, smush it. <laughs> because that's gonna be my technical term, smush it into my canvas. So you'll be able to tell, like right here, I can tell that I don't have any paint. So I wanna make sure that I squish that paint enough so it gets into all the unpainted areas. So I'm almost done here. I'm just making sure I've got it all nice and squished. This feels really weird. So <laughs> when you go to do it and you're like, oh my God, how weird does this feel? Just know that it's one of the fun experiences and you can see how soft it is in the areas that I have smushed it all the way. Now you can pull this off in two different ways. You can either pull it from the center out towards the bottom and the top, or you can pull it in the sideways direction. So for me, I'm gonna have one of these as the top or the sky of my, um, my abstract landscape and the other as the water. So what I'm gonna do, I know that I laid this one on um, second, so this one kind of overlaps this one. This is the one I'm gonna use as my sky or this side as my sky. So I'm gonna pull this one towards that, well, actually, I'm gonna flip this over. Hold on, do, 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 because I want this to be my top and it'll be easier for you to see as I'm doing it. So this is gonna be the top. I'm going to pull this piece of saran wrap off this way, and it's gonna create those upward motions. And then the other piece of saran wrap, this one, I want this to be my water reflection. So you could either just pull it to the side like this or you can actually slide it in your paint and you can see right there how I'm getting these natural streaks. I'm just kind of holding on to it from the side and sliding it. And once you see that you've got enough streaks, now you can just kind of Pull it off like that and voila, you got some very cool marks. And if you wanted to, you could also add additional marks. You could just take this and just kind of do this throughout it. Just kind of lay it down and pat it and just have as much fun as you want creating whatever texture you want. And then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and created, you can put your saran wrap away, perhaps take a little bit of a sip and get ready for your next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our treetops. We're gonna use a big bristle brush, but I do wanna forewarn you before you start this step that you wanna make sure your canvas is 
for the most part dry. Sometimes when you're using thick paint like this, it'll, it could potentially take days to fully dry, but as long as it's kind of dry to the touch, you should be fine. You can either, you know, take an extra long break if you need to, or you can sit here and blow on it, but that might take you a really long time. Or you could just take a blow dryer and blow dry it. That'll get it as dry as it needs to be. Um, and so how I'm going to do this is I am going to be using brown, red, and yellow and orange as my base coat for the first for the first layer of these tree tops. I want this them to be pretty dark. Um, so that way when I go to add the, the brighter leaves, I'll have some good dimension to it. So I'm going to be using just a dotting technique. You can have as many trees as you want. You can have them tall, you can have them short, you can have them round, you can have them pointy. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. I am going to consider about halfway to be, or maybe a little bit lower, somewhere where that darkest black area is. That's going to be kind of where my land meets my water. So when I do one up top, um, the tree top, I will down below make a corresponding kind of reflection with the same colors. So I'm going to start with some brown and red on my brush and I'm going to have one over in this vicinity and again I'm just kind of dotting and you can have them as big or as small as you want. These are going to be pretty cylindrical. You might want yours to be, you know, more on the ovaly side or more on the chaotic kind of side. Whatever works for you visually is totally fine. Then I'm going to come down below with the same colors on my brush and I'm just going to give myself some kind of little reflection down in the water and you can see I'm not doing anything fancy with it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of yellow and I'm going to make my next tree is going to be somewhere in here. Now, if you're using brown and yellow on your brush, you might accidentally see green. Totally okay. Those colors combined will make um, sometimes a shade of green. I have red on my brush, so that's going to help to counteract it. But green happens in the fall too. So, um, so now I'm just going to come down below. I know I want this one closer or higher on my canvas because it's shorter than that tree. So I'm going to do something like this. Then I like this color combination, so I'm just going to pick up more yellow. I think I'm going to have a big kind of yellow one over into this vicinity. So maybe this one's going to be a little bit larger. And because I'm not using white on my brush, it's going to get darker and darker as it dries. And then I can tell that this is kind of between these two. So when I go to do the reflection, it's got to be between these two. So somewhere in this vicinity. Now I think I'm going to pick up some of that orange and brown and maybe I'll have, I don't know, maybe I'll have one in through here. I don't know how many trees I'm going to go for. I think maybe four might be a good number. Maybe I'll have a little tiny one over here too. Sorry, I was feeling it, so I did it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go down below here. This has got to touch this one, so I know I've got to kind of touch here, and then this one's about the almost the same height, so somewhere in this vicinity, I'm gonna make this. And I think that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, maybe I'll have another red one. I'll pick. I just picked up a little more red. Maybe maybe I'll put this one right here. You can just have fun. Put them wherever you would like to put them. And then I'm going to put a little bit, I got to touch it. So touch this yellow one and put it in through here. And then we are going to be switching to that um, business card for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your treetops, you can put your big brush away and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be making uh, tree trunks and branches. Um, and I'm going to be using this fancy painting applicator tool, my business card. Um, the colors that I'm going to be using are white, black, and brown if I want to. Um, I am going to be making, obviously I want to have tree trunks for the vi vi visible trees, but this is abstract. So I'm just going to pretend like it's a whole big autumn forest and I'm going to put tree trunks and branches everywhere. So I am going to be dipping the edge of my 
um, painting applicator tool into my paint and then you can either streak it or you can kind of just press it and it'll make a line. You can curve it if you want to um, and I'm going to do that throughout the entire forest area. If you want a wider tree, you can just kind of almost move your your um, applicator to the side and that's going to make you almost like a birch tree type of mark. So you can certainly have fun with wider trees like that. I am going to be bringing mine down to about this area, right about where the my black kind of stops and the white is going to be very visible um, on top of the black but if you're going in if you have lighter areas you might want to use more of the black um, on top of if you had some light areas I am also using brown as I had mentioned and if you accidentally go into some wet red paint or yellow paint don't worry about it just kind of work it on in and you can have tall ones up behind these trees in the back however many you want is totally cool and then um, you also want to make a reflection of it too so if you have prominent ones you're going to want to kind of streak in into the water area something that looks like its reflection so it doesn't have to be a mirror image again this is abstract so as long as you just kind of have the illusion of you know some something happening down below in that water that that would suffice i'm going to just make sure i have maybe one that looks like that and maybe one that looks like this one and so at, um the reflections kind of go in an opposite direction so if this one is going this way I want it to if that's going that way I want it to go that way so it's sometimes it's a little difficult to um, figure out which way you should go but once we put all the ripples on and stuff not many people are going to notice if you put every single one in the correct spot and then once we have that well this goes almost to here so I want to make sure I've got that to there um, once we have this accomplished, let me just make sure I've got this one kind of, that's a pretty prominent one. We are going to be, let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We're going to switch brushes to our big brush. So once you've got enough of an illusion for these great tree trunks in through here, we're going to put this fancy painting tool away it, somewhere <laughs> and take out our large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the second layer on our treetops, which would also translate into a little bit in the reflection as well um, with, this, with a similar color. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to use my big bristle brush and I'm going to do whatever lighter colors I want. So I know that an autumn tree can have red and yellow leaves on it. It could have red leaves and orange leaves. It can have orange leaves and yellow leaves. It can have green leaves and, and red leaves. So they can really have an abundance of varying colors. You might want just a red tree, um, but however you want to convey these, we want to have a lighter spot somewhere. So for this particular one, and I'm just going to kind of freeform this, the colors that I'm going to be using are predominantly orange, yellow, and red, but I'll also use some white because I definitely want to lighten up these, especially my yellow. And I might go into the brown too. If I feel like I've got them too bright, I might end up going into the brown. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little white and I'm going to mix it into my yellow because I know that my yellow will be super duper see-through if I don't put a little bit of white into it. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with a little bit of that and then I think I'm going to also pick up a little bit of orange. So I've got white, yellow, and orange on my brush. I think I'm going to just start over on this one and give myself a little bit of some lightness I am going to um, have my trees have a real distinct light spot on them at, at some point. Um, you could have them all on the top, you could have them all on the left, all on the right, whatever you're feeling at that moment, just do it. Um, 
If you want them to look a little fluffier, you can bring that light color a little bit further out than your um, first layer. And if your um, paint is still wet underneath, it's okay because it's just gonna all blend in and make for a beautiful autumn tree. So whatever works, works. I just picked up a little bit more white and yellow and the orange, gonna make this one a little bit brighter. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red too and just kind of make this in the lighter vicinity, maybe a touch of brown. I'm just gonna do whatever I feel is gonna come natural to me. I might need to put a tree trunk on this tree too, this one and this one over here, but I'll get to that later. Um, and again, I'm just kind of fluffing out those edges. I'm really not using a ton of paint at this point. Um, I'm just kind of getting this paint on here. This one, I think I'm gonna do some I don't know, orange, yellow, and some red, just to, oh yeah, that looks pretty. And I, I, I'll probably pop in a little bit of white at the end too, just to make sure that I have an even, you know, brighter of its bright somewhere. And I like to leave some of these little dark spots throughout some of the trees. Um, if you want them to not look all so round, if you leave some of the dark spots in between, that's gonna, that'll help to accomplish that little illusion. Um, I'm gonna stick with this color scheme over here. Oh, maybe a little more white on this one over here. And again, if you wanted green, you can mix, pre-mix on your palette a little bit of brown and yellow or even black, yellow, and white would get you a nice shade of green. So whatever you're feeling, just go for it. It is totally up to you how you want this to, to happen. And I have also got to go down below and kind of add in a little bit of the, the colors too. Um, but I think I'm gonna wash my brush. If you, my, I feel like my brush is getting a little muddled. So if you feel yours is doing the same thing, just wash and dry it. Sometimes as we're doing this kind of process, we get lots of colors on our brush and then they start mushing all together. So I'm gonna, while my brush is clean, I'm just gonna kind of work in some of these um, reflection colors down in through here. We're gonna have a pretty um, cool thing that we're gonna do with our business card later down below too to get these to pop even more. But while we know what colors we've used, we've used so many different colors, this will help to identify those brightness, those bright colors in there. And then we're going to, what are we gonna do for the next step? Let's switch to our um, business card for the next step. Once you've got all of your reflections and your bright parts of your, your um, treetops on here, you can put this large brush away in your water cup. You can take, oh, I'm gonna have a hard time stopping, I can sense it. <laughs> you can take out your business card and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our water reflection. So I'm gonna be using my fancy business card as my painting applicator tool. I'm gonna to be using mostly white, um, but you could also use blue. You could use any of your colors that you've incorporated up top. Whatever works for you is totally fine. I'm gonna start with white paint, and I really wanna kind of give myself a delineation between my land and where that water starts. So I'm just going right between those trees and just kind of going left to right. This is exactly what we did for the tree trunks, only we're just going left to right. So I'm putting the paint along the edge of my business card and I'm just, I want it to be kind of chaotic. I, I don't I don't want it to be systematic. So that's why I'm I'm digging using this type of tool because it kind of does its own thing. I mean you get big spots, you get little spots, you get kind of broken lines, which happens um, if you were to ever use a palette knife. This is the same kind of um, process and an outcome that you would get from something like that. Uh, if you wanted, you could certainly add a little bit of blue, which would add some like lighter blue streaks to, you know, soften it a little bit, whatever 
whatever you want to do is totally fine. You just get this water to be as pretty and as representational as you want or as wild and crazy as you want. And then we are going to be switching brushes to our um, large brush for the next step. So once you've got all this awesome reflection, you can put this fancy painting tool away and you can, ah, yeah, see now it looks like that some clouds, reflections of clouds. Okay, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we're gonna be using our large bristle brush and we're gonna kind of close off the bottom of your land with maybe some shrubs or some fallen leaves or, or something. So I'm going to be using my tree colors. So that's gonna be everything on my palette except for blue. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of messily kind of just dot in here and there and everywhere whatever I want to jot in. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some yellow, red, and orange on my brush, and I'm just gonna kind of, at the top of my waterline, just start to dot in some fun stuff. So I just am now picking up some brown and red, and maybe I, you know, streak this over here. Maybe I pick up some brown and yellow that's going to look a little more on the green side and you can have all kinds of bushes and whatever you want make it super fun make it maybe there's piles of leaves that have just accumulated at the bottom of the forest floor whatever it's it's all about just enjoying the process and having something fun that's going to kind of stop the um let you know that you know part this is the land and you know it is it's just the forest floor and then we're going to be um using saran wrap <laughs> for our next step so once you've got all of this fun colors at the bottom of your land you can put this large brush away in your water cup take out your a piece of saran wrap and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are um, ab adding some more abstract to our abstract. <laughs> so I'm using another piece of um, saran wrap. This one doesn't have to be that big. And I'm just gonna crimple it up. And I am just, I'm, I guess I, I want this to almost look like confetti or something. <laughs> like, I feel like there should be autumn leaves falling from the whole thing, from the sky above. I, I just want more color. I want more, more, more pizzazz, I guess. I don't know. So I'm going to just use my, um, my saran wrap and whatever colors I want. And I'm going to just kind of like speckle and dot and maybe I get some streaks or things that look like splatters. I can do it in front of my land. I can do it in front of my trees. I can do it in front of my water. This is just kind of an explosion of autumn leaves all over my canvas. So I'm going to just kind of start with maybe some of my orange and yellow and my palette is a mess and that is all the better for this particular process. And when I do this, I'm just going to kind of really just hardly touch my canvas. I can go in front of everything. I'm really just popping it. Um, I've got some orange and some yellow on my brush. You could roll it if you wanted to and just kind of flick your hand, but I, I'm just, I'm just going to have a whole bunch of fun. It's going to end up looking more muted and blurred and energetic and everything that is autumn to me. I live in, um, in the, in New England in the United States and we have the most beautiful autumn trees ever. And so when I get to do these kind of paintings, it's just really, really just, you know, like I'm looking outside my, my window and I just really love it. So I'm going to add some more lightness, maybe some more white speckles and just 
you know, again, I'm doing it all over the place. <laughs> I'm doing it right in front of my trees, right in front of my land. You could even add some blue if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you know, just make it look like there's, conf yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> like there's confetti everywhere. I say, I say confetti, but maybe we'll just call it falling leaves. You could put it down in your water. So this is just my abstract, my, I'm abstracting more my abstract. <laughs> It doesn't make much sense, but it does in my little head. So I'm just continuing to add colors to my to my painting applicator here and just kind of dotting wherever I want. Ah, oh, this I love the orange and the yellow mixed together. And you just keep having fun and making this whatever you want it to be. I'm going right in front of these trees and this background and just making it into something even more special. And then we have one tiny little step to go. So once you have your complete explosion of autumn leaves all over your super cool abstract painting, you can put this piece of saran wrap away, take out your small paintbrush and get ready for the final step. All right, so we are on to the final step, which is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I am gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. And I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I'm gonna be using my initials. You could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like to be your identifying mark is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this super cool abstract painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>